Today we're going to visit analysis of variance and we're going to look at two-way analysis of variance. Uh, we're going to use our data sets. We'll go to the Chow data set again, I think. And uh, just to remind you, in um, that was the data set where uh, we look at Chow data, his ortho case study, and there were three lenses, uh, spherical contact lenses, the black dots, which were very similar to the aspheric lenses, the round circles, but quite a bit better in controlling growth than the spherical OZ glasses that were out here. Now, um, the difference comes in the shape of the eye, and we'll talk about that at a later session. But for right now, it's just to remind you of our data set. Now, we want to do two-way. So last week, we looked at a one-way analysis. We looked at lens type, and we looked at the five-year axial length. Well, um, you can also look at add other variables. You don't have to look at just one type of variable. And, and, a, and so let's, for just practical pur the purposes of today, uh, we could look at gender. We could look at um, the I. Um, let's, let's see if there's a difference between the left and the right eye. And last week, we went to compare means and we did a one-way ANOVA. Uh, now we're going to do a two-way, so we can't use this model. We're going to go into the general linear models. And specifically, there are uh, three types of analyses. One is univariate, which is the one we're going to use, multivariate, which if we were to run all the axial lengths as dependent variables at one time, we would use that. We don't do that too often. And another thing we could do is repeated measures. So, um, which reminds me why I probably isn't a good idea. We'll look at gender instead, because in fact, the I is a repeated measure. Now, if we were going to do repeated measures using I as a within subjects variable where we're measuring the same subject uh, twice, we would have to set up the data a little differently than this. The data right now is set up for this mixed model down here, which is the preferred way of doing repeated measures. So we're not going to bother with looking at uh, repeated measures with this type of model because it's just not uh, a particularly good model to use. And we'll discuss that later when we go into mixed models. So for right now, we're going to look at a two-way model, uh, univariate, and we're, uh, so let's see what that looks like. So we need a dependent variable. What our outcome variable is axial length at five years. And we're going to look at gender and lens type 2, which is the three variables. And in this case, the model, it says full factorial because we have the fixed effect of gender, we have the lens type, and then we are going to have an interaction term. I'm going to come down here to options. And so we have gender, lens type, and gender by lens type, which is an interaction term. Interaction term means that uh, the effect of gender depends on which lens type you're using. Or in other words, the, uh, um, the lens type depends on the gender. So it's, it's an interaction. You have to worry about the level of one, the, the levels are not in parallel. They're not the same depending on uh, what happens. So for example, uh, for the aspheric lens, 
for some reason, males might be better than females. Whereas if you were looking at spherical, females might be better than, show less growth than males. Not likely to happen, but it's a possibility, and that's what we test for when we do the complete model with gender. Now, I'm just going to run this, and we're going to take a look at what we get. Um, and so we have our between subjects information. We have 236 females, 146 eyes. Uh, we probably should have split this by left and right eye because we're violating our assumption of independence here. Uh, if we look, we see we have an effect of gender, we have an effect of lens type, and we have a significant uh, interaction. We come down here, we see this gives us the estimated means for gender. Uh, we grow a half a meter more if you are a male, millimeter more. Uh, the lens type, the longest lens was um, the, long, the greatest axial length was in spherical that doesn't work and uh, and then next was works well and the smallest growth was in a spheric the gender oh uh, the gender by lens type gives us this interaction term I'm going to run this one more time I'm going to show you oh first of all let me split the file do that correctly. Split file, compare groups by eye. So we're going to replicate for the our study for the left and right eye. The other thing that we like to do is in our options. Now I highlighted these three things and brought them over to this side, which allows us to display the means, and those are what we saw. But you can also check this box, which says compare main effects. And that's a nice thing to do, too. So here we are. We have the separate lenses. Notice, again, we have gender lens type and gender by lens type interactions in both the left and the right eyes. Those are significant. We can see the means down here. Uh, males are half a millimeter for the longer for the uh, left eye, and they're a half a millimeter longer for the right eye. And the um, what we have here is we asked for pairwise comparisons, and we did the least significant difference test. Um, and so we get females compared to males, and it's significant at 0 0.001 for the left eye. Females compared to males, significant at 0 0.001 for the right eye. Uh, then we have lens type. Uh, lens type, these are the means for the left and right eye. These are all the comparisons. Spherical works well versus spherical doesn't work well. Not significant. Spherical works well versus aspheric. Significant. And then basically we have three conditions and six tests. But half of them are just the same thing, just in reverse order. So for example, this is spherical works well versus spherical doesn't work. This is spherical doesn't work versus spherical works well. In both cases, the P is 0.234. So it just kind of gives you more than you need. I think the programming to filter that out and only do it one way was just more complicated than it was worth. Um, it gives you an overall test there. Now down here is the interaction term. And again, we get the means of the, uh, the three different lens types for each of the conditions or for each of the genders. 
for the left eye and the same thing again for the right eye. But notice there are no paired comparisons. Generally speaking, when we do something like this, we care about whether or not for females, these are all different. For males, these are all different in the left and right eye. But our test does not, the, the analysis doesn't give us that. So I'm going to show you a little hack that you can do to get that. So we go into our linear model and um, I'm going to add one other thing. When we looked at our initial picture, <clears throat> we're going to change our analysis of variance to what's called analysis of covariance. And what we want to do is we want to adjust for baseline axial length. And you can see that a lot of variability in five-year follow-up isn't due just to the difference between the mean of this lens type and these two lens types. A lot, if not most, of the variance is due to this baseline axial length. So it would be nice to adjust all our, all our samples, essentially remove the variance for baseline axial length and, and test lens type and gender after we have um, taken out the variability of this baseline. So let's see how we do that. So we come in, analyze general linear models univariate. Everything is the same here, but now we're going to put axial length into the covariate. Remember, this is analysis of covariance. And it's a continuous variable. Because it's a continuous variable, we don't put it up in fixed factors. Even if we were just interested in axial length as another factor, we wouldn't put it up here because it would have as many degrees of freedom as there are different axial lengths and that would just really mess us up. There would be that many different levels and not very many observations at each baseline level. So we put it in here and it's like regression. So when we do that we go into options and we still have all this stuff is the same but we need to add parameter estimates. I'm not going to go into this too much because we're going to get a lot more on how this works in um, regression analysis. But I'm just going to stick it in here so that we can get an estimate of how effective or see what for each. This is like regression for the baseline. For each unit increase in the baseline, millimeters, how, how much do we increase in five-year follow-up. And we're going to continue. Now, I was telling you about a hack so you can get the means, uh, test the mean paired differences of the interaction. What we're going to do, rather than just say OK and run this, we're going to paste the code into this syntax editor. And notice that we have our UNA-ANOVA, AL5, that's axial length of 5, by gender and lens type 2 with this covariate AL0, which is the baseline. Now notice that um, this says the method is sums of squares type 3. Uh, there's an intercept term. The estimated means table is given. It's going to adjust for baseline and it's going to compare the means for gender adjusting using this adjusted LSD, which is basically no adjustment. The least significant difference test is a t-test using the mean square error term with no adjust for multiple comparisons. In this case with gender, there are no multiple comparisons. There's just two genders. 
The second one, same way, lens type 2, adjusting at baseline, and we're going to do a least square significant, a least square difference, least significant difference test um, that's adjusted. Now, in this case, there are three, um, three comparisons, but we're not going to adjust for them for multiple comparisons. And then this one says gender by lens type with baseline, but notice there's no compare. So it's not going to do any comparisons because in the uh, model, it said uh, compare main effects. Well, we want to compare lens types, lens type two for each uh, gender. We're going to adjust with LSD. So we just add this, this verbiage in here, and it's going to give us the paired tests. Our criteria for significance is 0.05. And the model that we're doing has a, a covariant of baseline, main effect of gender, lens type 2, and the gender by lens type 2 interaction. So let's see how that goes. Now, the way you run the uh, syntax is this uni Unionova procedure, this is all one thing. It's hard to see, but there's a period right there. It goes from here to here. You can see it on the side, the way that's bracketed. So we could click in there anywhere and click the Run button. Or, you know, if we're just really compulsive about it, we can highlight it all and hit the Run button. Now, just to remind you, when we looked up here, everybody was significant. We didn't have the baseline in there. When we did the comparisons, um, uh, let's see, that was down. Uh, I guess we didn't we didn't compare the thing, but let's look at the main effects. The main effects of lens type: spherical that works well and doesn't work were not significantly different but spherical works well and aspheric was. Now we have adjusted for baseline and let's see what we get. There's our model. Uh, now we have 115 females with the left eye, 75 males, and uh, so there's 121. The, this is propensity analysis data, so it's not perfectly matched up by gender. There is some repeats they're not all the same subjects. Lens type 2, we have the numbers for that. Down here, now notice that we have the baseline is very significant. And in fact, if you look at the F test, see how that is so big. This, is, this F test kind of lets you compare the different variables. So the baseline accounted for the most lens type next gender next and there wasn't much with the interaction which was not significant for the left eye it also wasn't significant for the right but everybody was different just like before um, all the things were different uh, we have this thing for parameter estimates which really the only thing up here this pretty much tells us about our fixed effects but that continuous variable, this gives us the beta weight of 0.969. So it's, it's like for every unit increase in baseline, there's almost an equal increase in five-year axial length. So, um, so the con contribution, that's a pretty strong correlation there. Uh, if we look at male and female, 
Now they're different, but when you adjust for baseline axial length, which if we look down here, it says covariates appearing in the model are evaluated at the following values. So the, this is, these are model least square means. They've been adjusted for, for baseline on a baseline of 24.5 millimeters. You can see they grow about a millimeter over five years, the axial lengths. And the, uh, the difference is really quite small, 0.5. But it's significant, even though it's that small, that small difference, which is about 0.15 millimeters is significant and the reason that is is because we have controlled for all that difference and baseline it makes the test much more powerful in looking to see if there's a gender effect now we'll we'll later look at um at axial length and see if or at effect size and see if that um while it's significant if it's meaningful um, here we have lens types. There's the, again, the difference. Now, let's look at our significance in lens type. Remember before, the spherical works well and doesn't work well was not significant, and here it is. When we adjust for baseline, there's a significant difference between the two spherical types of lenses, but not aspheric. Um, so again, the point here is up here, um, up here, works well, doesn't work, no difference, works well, aspheric, different, down here, it's the reverse. So what we've adjusted by adjusting for that baseline axial length, making everybody the same at the start with axial length, we get a different answer. And so these are the means after um, you've adjusted for the difference in baseline. And this really correlates much better with the picture that we had. We saw that the works well in the aspheric points are pretty much overlapping each other. Those are not different. The original one where we don't adjust for baseline says they are. And these guys are clearly different than the other two. Not adjusting for baseline does not show that. So adjusting for baseline and getting rid of that noise was really helpful uh, to us. Okay, and then finally, we can look at the interaction and gender by analysis. Let's see, and then where are those pairwise comparisons? So we have our estimates again where we look at the means for female, male, for the left and right eyes. And then we have the pairwise comparisons where we look at for the left eye for females, works well versus doesn't work, significant. Works well versus aspheric, not significant. And is that true? That pattern is true for males, the right eye, female, and male, zero and nine six two so um so we get by adding by hacking the syntax code and running that rather than straight from the menu we can get paired comparisons in here okay so one final thing i'd like to do is just kind of go over again effect sizes and make sure you see where that is in, in uh, doing this process, this particular code. 
So let's go to Excel. We have to calculate this stuff by hand. Well, sort of by hand, at least within Excel. And so um, actually, normally I would do it within the interaction term, but I think I won't here. I think I'm just going to go to the lens types and we're going to go to our estimates for the lens types. So we're going to copy these means over here. And then we need our source table for analysis of variance. And that's right here. This is tests of between subjects effects. I'm going to copy that. And again, I right click and I like this second one because it doesn't bring in the merging of cells and stuff. It just makes it easier to work with. We'll make it a little bit bigger. One thing that you need to be consciously aware of is that our means have this inconvenient letters A and B in them. So we want to work with our means, but we can't because they have these letters. So we're going to go to find over here, replace. We're going to put an A in there. We're going to replace all. And it made three replacements, and the A's are gone. Let's do the same thing. We're going to do B, and by putting nothing in replace with, it replaced them with nothing. And so now we have gotten rid of those uh, subscripts there, and, and uh, it, it enables us to work. Now the next thing we have to do, we're doing our effect size. Remember, effect size is the difference between means. Uh, divided by the standard uh, deviation. Now, in this case, our standard deviation is going to be taken from the mean square error term. This error right here, what's called error, is the within subjects variance after you have, um, you know, after you've accounted for the variance between all these other factors. Now, remember that uh, if you think about it, the within subjects variance is the average of the three, the, the standard deviation for the three lens types. This is the left eye and so forth. So this is the variance, so let's calculate effect size. So this equals, um, let's compare everybody against aspheric. So this is, um, well, we'll just go with spheric, uh, let's do a parenthesis, spheric minus aspheric divided by, now it's the variance, the mean square error. We're going to take the square root, which is called the root mean square. And we're going to come down and get that. And there we have the uh, root mean square error. Uh, so let's just look at this. The effect size between spherical works well and aspherical is not very big. Did I do that right? That is a really small difference. There is no effect. Now, it wasn't significant, but that's pretty crazy small. Okay, let's uh, copy this down here. And uh, it doesn't like that. Well, let's see what we have. We want to divide or subtract those two. Spherical doesn't work, minus aspheric. And 
our error. It's okay. Okay. Why does that look okay? That should not look okay. Ah, there we go. I think I might have changed the wrong one. Hey, Spirit, up here. There we go. Let's fix this guy. Change the wrong value. There we go. Wow. The difference between spherical doesn't work and aspheric is four standard deviations different. That's huge. Let's copy these two. Bring them down to here. Paste. Let's check our numbers. Those look good. This, however, doesn't. <clears throat> this comes down to our error term. And 0.18 isn't very big. It's under 0.2, which is our very minimum clinical relevant effect. And this one, that looks okay. And we come down here. And again, 4.5, a really big effect size. So these are effect size. They're pretty big. I think I would like to just take a real quick look at effect sizes up here. These were the ones where we did not adjust for baseline. And our ANOVA. Here. Now here we don't have any little letter subscripts because we haven't didn't run an analysis of covariance. So let's um, let's copy these. This isn't going to line up right, but that's okay. Let's find out where everybody is. Okay, that's spheric minus a spheric, and our mean square error term is right there. Now that's 0.49. Well, remember, those were significant, about a half standard deviation. So let's be clear on this. If we had not done analysis of covariance, we would have gotten a very different answer from our analysis. And I dare say a less accurate difference. We have adjusted for the variability and this, this massive difference at baseline between the uh, people. And it instead of saying that it was a uh, practically clinically relevant at our 0.5 level uh, difference between uh, spherical that works well and aspheric, that difference compared to nothing at the uh, after adjusting. Now you have to think to yourself which one is really correct. What is the truth here? And here's a situation where um, your statistics matter. They matter a great deal. So uh, uh, this is a, a cautionary tale of doing the statistics properly. Making sure things make sense. When we look at this graph saying these black dots and open circles are different and these black dots and triangles are not, 
does not pass the smell test. We make this significant by adjusting and making it making common sense rule by adjusting for baseline.